We live in a time where the flow of information is constant, with competing voices in crowded spaces, where old school thoughts meet new school ideas. We are constantly having to recreate ourselves. To understand these identities, we need to decipher the culture. This is unconventional. This, this is, is Lounge Academics. Davis, yes! <laughs> Davis, this is brilliant. How are you, sir? I'm good, I'm good. I'm waiting for my camera to show on. Can you how see is me? It? Can't you see me? I can see you good, man. I, I can see you, man. I don't know how I'm, yeah. how I'm looking. Am I looking uh, good? You look yeah. So what, you can't, can't you see yourself? No, I can't see myself, which is weird. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I can see you very clear. I can see you really clear, sir. So um, I, I can see myself, I can see you. I'm just excited because we couldn't even get this far last yeah, time. Yeah, man. We, yeah. we were just looking Finally to do this, here. you know? We're here, Finally. we're here. So it's, it's really good to see you. But um, obviously, if anything happens technical-wise, if you drop off or signal goes, let's, let's jump back on and we'll, and we'll try and resume, yeah? Um, yeah, yeah. And that would be good. Okay, so have you, have you managed to see yourself yet? And no, you I can't. Still, my gosh, Davis, this isn't good, you know? <laughs> yeah. This isn't good. This isn't Wait. good. I tried it like a couple of weeks ago and yeah. it was all fine. Okay, no worry. It's cool. It's cool. But, but you can still see we'll me? Do... Yeah, I can see you. You're clear as day. I can yeah. see you right on my screen. So you, you're very clear. And you can see me, go. but you just can't see yourself. I think it's just because I was using the correct? camera before. Okay. Just to make sure I'm looking sharp. Okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, yeah. Like, but but can, can you see yourself now then? Now I can see myself, yeah, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, good, good, good. Because it's important for you to be able to see yourself if you're going to do this, you know? Hi, yeah. Paper Pages. People are coming in um, and saying hello. So um, hello, for, hello. The for the purposes of those that have just joined us, and we've literally just kicked in, started the conversation, where this week we're going to be talking about, um, you know, growth mindsets. Obviously, Davis is a coach. Um, I'm not going to say too much because I'm going to allow Davis to obviously introduce himself, talk about his business, talk about his work, what he does. But um, we're going to be talking about the theme of a growth mindset and especially given the current restrictions and the current pandemic. Mm -hmm. How do we do this during these difficult circumstances? Um, and we're just going to have a conversation basically about that. So um, without further ado, Davis, I'm going to let you kick off and let everybody know a bit more about you. So the floor is yours, sir. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Davis Wondera Jr. I'm a growth mindset coach and I'm also the founder of Triumph Coaching. And what Triumph Coaching, why I started it, was basically to make a change in the world, a positive impact. And what it's there for is basically to help people who are struggling in life. And it's more struggling in not knowing what to do. I myself came from a part of working but not actually enjoying my work you know i was working as an engineer electrical engineer i studied got my okay. masters and i was working for i think almost five years you know but i just the love and the passion wasn't there anymore you know i was working in a job that was mundane you know and i, I knew that there's more to life than just chasing money because i was making good money but at the same time i was gonna say was yeah sorry let me show you yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was trading my time for money. You see, so I was working like on average, like 10 hour days, most weekends as well. So it was like alternate weekends. And it was like, yeah, you get paid well, but cause you're working so much. And then it came to a point where it's just like, okay, I'm working all of this. I was still going on holidays, but with my work, I was like working away from home. And I knew like socially, I wasn't really happy. And making money is good. You get paid every month, whatever. But at the same time, just like the social aspect and just how you're feeling, I felt like depressed as well. And I knew that there is more to life than actually just working, making money. And at the end of the day, what do you have to show for it? You know, friends, relationships, yeah. you know. So I decided I wanted to start something. So I went on a, I quit my job, went on a um, year of like self-reflection, traveling, went uh, around South America for like 12 months just to find myself and also to find what I was going to do next. See, I didn't know what I was going to do next when I quit my job, but I knew staying in that job and staying in that environment would lead down to a worse path than me quitting. You know, so I made a choice to, okay, take a leap of faith, quit my job, 
discover and reflect upon myself and what it is I want to do, you know. And after that, it was almost like a year before I came across coaching, you know, because I have a, I had a coach at that time as well, and it was my uncle, and he was more like a mentor, you know, just helping each other out with certain goals. But slowly but surely, when I was going through okay, what I wanted to do, you know, then I came across okay, coaching, and I was like, this is exactly what I want to do. And I spoke with my uncle, and at the time he was like, "Ah, oh, that's exactly what I was doing." And I was like, "Wow, this thing has been staring at me in the face for all this time, and finally I'm able to do it." You know, so I didn't waste any time. Got my life coaching diploma, and then I started like the triumph coaching. And our motto is basically to triumph, you must first try. You know, so many people are scared of failure. You know, scared to try something. You know, they'd rather stay in their comfort zone and not try. anything you know and for me that is something that is a disservice to yourself you need to push yourself you need to try and see exactly how you can actually develop how you can grow you know try and reach for um personal excellence you know so that's why i started like the company and the company is currently just to help millennials especially um for okay. them to find their path for them to like find something that is in tune with their core values you know aligned with their core values you know not something that is just a 9 to 5 you know just being stuck in the rat race and yeah not enjoying what they're doing you know because life is here to be enjoyed and at the end of the day every day that goes by we're just getting closer to death you know and that, it, it sounds harsh but that is the reality you know so as in like if you're not doing something you enjoy what is the point what is the actual point you know you have to enjoy life and at least not be stressed with your work so many people are even when i was working they just like yeah i'm just here for the money and i'm like i don't want to be like 10 years 15 years working and feeling the same you know getting old and yeah. that's it just just for the money you know so i was like wow. i need to do something and i need to do something where i'm changing people's lives so that was why um i started the triumph coaching and so how we do what we do that was like the next question um it was basically is through one to one coaching and before i actually get into that i'll explain like why choosing triumph coaching and ra- rather than choosing my own name because for me the vision for the company is bigger than me it's not just about mm. you know davis coaching or whatever so it's more than me i want this to be here once or past you know to still continue helping people you know find their passion find their um jobs something that they love you know their purpose in life and at least strive to be happy in life you know to be fulfilled in life rather to just go through the motions you know being in the rat race getting money chasing material possessions and yeah so that that is another reason why it's triumph coaching rather than anything to do just with my name you know and how we do it is one to one coaching and it's mostly online zoom calls and it, that's how we just start of um we've started i think we are just over a year old now you know so okay. still quite early but it's still like yeah learning the ropes and actually just getting there and yeah. another thing i'd say is me being a growth mindset coach and the reason on that you know sometimes you'd find let's say business coaches but they never actually started a business you know you've done the theory <laughs> yeah. you read about it yeah and that's one thing that for me as like i cannot stand as like if you haven't walked the walk how can you come and you know talk the talk or advise someone or help in that way so me growth mindset and what it means to me personally is basically valuing your growth not being afraid of failure not being afraid to try something if people are going to laugh at you if you're going to fail you know you're doing it for yourself for your own personal growth and valuing growth rather than staying safe you know playing it safe like no as like i've got a job that's paying the bills and does like i'm fine like this that's fine for you but at the same time you should try yeah. to reach your full potential cuz yeah. that's what we're here for as like enjoy life but at least try and reach your full potential otherwise you never know what you could have been yeah no no totally totally yeah yeah i mean that sorry was there anything else you wanted to add um to that um no I, i think that's yeah that's pretty much it i'm yeah. sure you're going to ask questions that like yeah yeah out. definitely i mean usually uh, how we do this as you've most probably seen from previous we we have like a conversation we just kind of flow yeah. so it's you know um we're just quite yeah relaxed and flexible like that i mean 
Davis, well, I think you've dropped a lot of bars here. You, you've dropped some nuggets of, of, of knowledge and wisdom. And it's interesting because when you mentioned being an, if we just go back a bit, when you were talking about being an engineer, yeah. I, the first thing that came to mind is, like, boy, engineers get good money. Like, you know, engineers get quite decent money. Now, I get, but that's not what it's all about. You know, money mm. isn't the be all or end all of everything. But I, it's interesting that I'm, I'm curious to know what made the shift for you? Because, you know, usually we're taught to strive for our goals to get money, to get a good job. We, we, we study, we educate ourselves, whether that's university yeah. or whatever it is, or vocational training, whatever training you take to get a better job, to get that income. And then we make it. We're making the desired amount of annual salary that we went it to go for, to strive for. And, and, and that's what we go for. To make that jump or that leap from... Um, having consistent security and comfort to then saying, nah, I'm not really feeling fulfilled in this. I want to do something else. Um, mm. That sounds like a scary prospect for some people. Uh, <laughs> and I'm was. curious to know what, how, yeah, I just, I would like to yeah. know a bit more about how, what was the thought process and what was happening for you? Yeah. So for me, as like, I always wanted to be an engineer from when I was young, as in like, even like still now, engineering is a passion. I still yeah. love it. So it's not like I've, fallen out of um, love for the engineering itself, you know. But as I was growing and as we grow, things change as well, you know. And that's another thing, like, I always, like, try and tell people, like, your career or your degree is not your life sentence. Just because you studied something does not mean that you have to yeah. stay there. And there's so many people, like, and I was in the same shoe. And this is, like, after um, I decided to quit my job and, like, okay, I must only do something technical, you know. Yeah. But trying to stick to your um, question, like, why I felt like that. So, for me, like, money, I, I always, and it's not even trying to be cocky, but I always knew somehow, as in, like, I will survive, you know, regardless, as in, like, I've never been someone, like, so scared. I, I remember, like, at university, I'm applying for jobs, and everyone's like, oh, there's not... stop until I do you know yeah. and even like since I was like I being going back to like my background as well I'm from Kenya and I moved to like the UK when I was like 14 and oh, back okay. in Kenya as in like we were well off when I was younger you know and then yeah. we went through a rough patch you know and then after that it was just like so I've seen like having money and I've seen without having money and we still managed to survive you know so for me education right and also like education not just in school but self-education reading a lot all of that was something that i think developed my mindset and my outlook in life you know i was yeah. reading books and like more about like okay fear and about money and you see so many people chasing material possessions right and i've read so many like stories as well people who yeah, had yeah. so much money not happy bankers because so many of us engineers as well going to like mm. banking you know to mm. chase money and all of this but most of them are like committing suicide you know and yeah, i was like yeah. what's going on it's like you know you got rich kings sultans as well not happy or eating themselves to death and all of this so i always knew like money is not the end all and be all of everything you know and, and i guess for you what i'm picking up on is that you've experienced that because you said in kenya back home right you obviously you know, you were well, there wasn't an issue of money or finance, although you did go through a rough patch. Yeah. So I guess you, you know the experience of having and then yeah. not having or struggling through that period, where yeah. I guess for a lot of people, I think the experience for maybe, and when I say the majority, not everyone, but I think a lot of people would relate to this thing of, well, I never really was well off. I've, I've known to be struggling through that period. So that goal to be better or to have more money or to have more wealth then becomes an obsession. It becomes something that people want to aspire to have because they may yeah. not have, have had that, you know? Um, and the interesting thing is, just to add to that, because I've just seen um, 
paper pages has posed the question. So yeah. normally, obviously, and people, please feel free, post your questions as you do, as we're talking. Yes, if I'm ready. David says anything, I say anything, and you, wanna, you want us to respond to that, just let us know. So paper pages has put the question, you might have seen it there already. What do you feel has been kind of missing from your clients' journeys? that lead them to be in need of your service in terms of millennials. So I guess there's a bit of like, what influenced you to target millennials? And what did you notice was missing for you to want to provide your service? And I guess ultimately, what does the service offer in terms of that personal coaching? For me, millennials is exactly like what we're speaking about. The whole thing about like chasing money. Everyone's just like, okay, get a job. And I was in the same boat. You know, I'm a millennial myself. So mm -hmm. I remember like when I was, like graduating, the first thing is, okay, I need to just get a job and get into the industry and that's it. So the thing that drew me was people being unhappy, especially like young people, unhappy in their careers, you know, and we're, we're all talking like nowadays about like mental health and all of this. Yeah, and if you're yeah. not doing something that you actually enjoy, right, something that is stressing you out, then that is not healthy. That, that drives people insane, that will get, okay. get, get you depressed. And so that is one thing that I myself have not gone through know that as in like yeah. these are issues and also like having done my research as in like one of my main like um tools or where i'm active on most is reddit and there's so many millennials young people asking oh what should i do with life because there's so much conflicting information okay out there. and so many so people are, are confused as well because they're yeah. hearing this from someone they're getting pushed by their parents to do something that they themselves don't enjoy you know they don't yeah. they're not doing it for it themselves it's, it's interesting that you say that. I'm, I'm glad that you, it's interesting. So you're, you're speaking from a perspective of being a millennial yourself, having experienced, seen it, and you're seeing your peers. You're seeing people. I'm, I, I've just missed the millennial mark myself, so I'm slightly out of the range yeah. for that. But um, I guess I see where you're coming from in noticing this pressure to want to get money, 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 cash, 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 material wealth. But I liked what you said about... Um, the point that you made about the pressure from family, culturally. And I think there's something to be said, particularly being of the African diaspora, yeah, being from Africa, there is a, and not just being African, but obviously the Caribbean, other parts of the world, indigenous populations and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There is this increasing pressure to do, go to university, get that um, degree, get that first class, become a lawyer, become a doctor, become a consultant, you know, whatever that is. Yep. And and it's interesting you say that and you get that, but people are not feeling fulfilled. So I think exactly. it's brilliant that you've picked up on that. That um, exactly. And so just from your experience, um, how do people come to you? So obviously you've done your research, you've seen that people, um, you're noticing that people are struggling, right? Yep. They're not um, with mental health, well-being, they're under pressure from work. How does that translate into people um, accessing your service? How, how do you get clients, so to speak, then? So I personally, especially through like the avenues of like Reddit, because Reddit, people ask questions. They tell you their okay. problem. You know, so it's so much easier. And I'm just there, like, I reply to them, you know, try and give them value and answer their question. And then sure. from there, Tell them, like, listen, you can check me out here. If you need more information, check me out here, you know. But you have to do that. I do that so much that you get, like, okay, a, a low percentage but because I do it so much, right? And yeah, people will reply. You know, you might get one in 10 or two in 10, you know, but at the same time, it's about giving value and trying to help people. See, I don't do that. Yeah. Oh, I need to get clients. Let me try and do this. I do that trying to help these people because I know, like, where they're coming from. You know, so sure. even if they don't like call, book a discovery call or whatever, I know mm. I've done my bit for karma. Let's say, sure. you know, so, so it's quality quantity. Like, I want to like help people. Yeah. So that, that's, that, that's how it like works for me as like just reaching out to them, right? And then putting myself out there. Because with coaching, especially like with my niche, it's not something that you can go out there, especially like on LinkedIn, right? And be like, okay, um, are you happy at work? No, you don't like it? Okay, like, yeah, I can help you. <laughs> yeah, you know, because yeah. LinkedIn, no one's going to tell you, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hate my job. I, you know, so you have to, like, listen. And the platform that I've found, like, that is most, that is the best at it is Reddit, because people, it's mostly, like, anonymous anyways, but people are, are there, like, crying out for help. You know, and they're telling you exactly, like, I don't feel, I have any purpose, I don't feel any passion, as in, like, some of them, 30s, 40s, you know, and it, it's just, like, for me, it's just, like, I'm trying to help everyone, but I know I can't help everyone. And that's one thing yeah. that I need to like learn. Okay, like focus on like my 
my target market as well and sure. help the ones I can, you know, because there's so many people out there and like you see it and it, for me, it's just like, it's ridiculous. Like people are just being pushed down avenues and down paths that are not congruent with their core values. Yeah, yeah. And, you know? and it's really, I mean, the thing that I find fascinating from what you're saying though, because I feel there's a general, I think there's changes in generations, right? So for me, um, I, I, I'm very much used, I think, Social media, particularly Facebook, um, Twitter, um, and Instagram, all the other platforms that we're using, people often will come up there. And I think amongst the younger generation, there's this thing where people will spill their guts and their tears online. You know, I'm feeling low today. I feel like this this happened or whatever, which yeah. for me was a bit unusual because from my that's not something you did, you know, yeah. in the public arena like that. You may do that with friends or you may contact yeah. someone, loved ones and go, look, I'm not really feeling the best today. Yeah. But I do think there's a shift in terms of our young people that are taking to social media and maybe sharing that. Now, I know, like you said, to some extent, you're also up against that pretense where some people want to keep up that brave face. Yeah. Um, and don't, there'll be some that don't want to engage with that. They want to keep the nice looking model pictures of Instagram and the selfies and, and, yeah. and, and present this kind of lifestyle. How, how do you penetrate all of that, though? So if you know there's people on the other side of that, that phone, that wall, that interface that are struggling, how, how do you penetrate that to get through to those people that kind of need that support most, do you think? So for me, as like one is with the content that I post. The content that I post okay. right, on Instagram, let's say, for example, my videos is just helping people. So by you watching that, you know, okay, this guy is talking value or he's, he's talking something that yeah. I am needing, you know. And by what, again, going back to like Reddit, because Reddit is a place where they are just asking questions. They're basically crying out for help, you know. And there, this is why I say like it's anonymous because on social media, it's for me, it's ridiculous because everyone's just wearing yeah. a mask. You know, everything's yeah, perfect, of course. you know. Yeah. And at the same yeah, time, yeah, everyone yeah. is trying to like um, keep up with the Joneses. You know, oh yeah, I've got this nice flashy lifestyle. I'm happy and this. But yeah. on Reddit, it's something totally different. Sure. You know, everyone's, they're actually crying out and like asking for help. Like, oh, I'm going through this. Things that you yeah. would not see on actually Instagram. So that's why I don't really use Insta Instagram for that. Instagram for me is just more posting like, my content, like just like the sure. videos that I make and like and the being motivational visual, posts. Being, yeah. Being yeah. basically present and being visible um, yeah. in this space. So your so your main engage so Reddit is one that you definitely use. Um, yeah. Reddit is the kind of platform that you use to engage with people's queries and stuff as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how do you feel? Because you know, in terms of our conversation, we're talking about I mean, we we've I, I say come out of, we haven't even, I would argue we haven't come out of it really, but we've had, we've experienced one of the most extreme bouts of kind of lockdowns ever known to man, to be fair. We've, we, we've been confined to our homes for however long under these, these social restrictions, under these limitations, yeah. under the, the impact of obviously the current pandemic. I think this is a, we kind of know where we're going with this question, but what have you learned about people's kind of mental well-being or where are people at at the moment? Um, have you noticed from Reddit? Because I know you were doing your business before the lockdown, before yeah. um, the COVID restriction. So have you noticed the, a shift in the increases of people's anxiety or is there a correlation to that at all? I'd say like the biggest shift I've seen is people worried about like job losses and, you know, yeah. which is like normal, you know, but rather than, People, let's say, okay, I, I want to like change job now and I'm looking for this, you know, I need help. Now it's people like, oh yeah. my gosh, I don't know. I've been laid off work, you know, but I wasn't really liking it anyways. And I'm trying to think, okay, where should I go next? Or I've been looking for work and I don't know what to do next. You know, what's a job market like, you know? Yeah, So because people's that's lost like, jobs, furloughs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so it, it's people more like just looking for opportunities. And now it's just, they will take anything rather than, more being in a place of like comfort and be like, okay, now I can, I, I'm not happy where I am and I want mm -hmm. to find something that is more aligned, you know, as in like, I know I don't enjoy this. Yeah. I want to shift and change. But now it's like sure. people are, people are just scared as in like, they're, they're like, okay, I've lost yeah. my job. Like, as in like, what's going to happen? What should I do? Asking for advice. People are mostly like asking as well, um, where should I 
um, apply for jobs you know what sort of markets are good at this time you know so there's a lot of negativity as well in people yeah just being scared you know and people so, not, not believing in themselves and not like yeah. yeah so how how are you responding to that so you're getting people that are like look i'm furloughed or i've lost my job i'm pan- i'm stressed um i don't know where i'm paying my bills my family food on the table um how how are you kind of responding what 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 what's how are you helping people navigate that through that process what's your for kind me, of coaching techniques yeah for me through like the coaching techniques or even through just reaching out is telling them be in control or know what you are in control of you you don't know about covid and like the restrictions there's not so much you can do about that right yeah. right now for me it's the, it's the best time for personal development you know reading and just working on yourself you know reflect because right now it's a, it's a good time right for you to reflect and see like am i on the right path you know am i actually going down the way that i actually want to go you know looking and seeing okay in 5 years will, will i be where i want to be you know so it's it's like yeah. a pause in your life right to actually reflect time to reflect exactly yeah if you are doing what you want to do you know because some people i'm sure, sure is like if they didn't have this they would just keep on working in their job 10 years sure. 15 years down the line to be too late yeah so so your advice at the moment is for those people that are in a situation whereby they're kind of been furloughed they're unemployed they're quite anxious at the moment you're saying also use this period as a time for pause for thought to reflect yes. you need to reflect. you want to go yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. that, that is the only thing that is in your control there there yeah. is no point like worrying about or what are they going to do with the restrictions you have no control over that so why worry yeah. about it you know yeah. as like focus on what you can control read more um study more online courses do that develop yourself as a person but right? if yeah. you're scared about getting jobs learn more skills you know there's so many different yeah. online courses you can do and some people are like i know being followed and or you're working from home or you don't even need to go to work but yet you're still getting paid and stuff like that but at the same time use that time right to learn something like you should grow mm. people should be growing and working on themselves you know mm. don't worry about things that you cannot control you mm. know so so yeah, it seems a- and and hence that speaks to the growth mindset because i guess yep. you're looking at people's limiting belief systems you're yep. looking at how people can grow and expand and develop um as individuals um as part of that process whatever circumstances they find themselves in so exactly. what what would be your um top if you kind of had free tips that you would give people um right now i know you've definitely spoken about reflection and pausing for thought i totally that's get that's the first that. one yeah <laughs> that's your first one so we got that yeah. one so two more and um, what other tips would you give to people to add to this pause to thought what what else do you think people could use this time to do um to to think through this period of of restrictions lockdown um and uncertainty first of all you have to just be calm because you don't know again focus on what you can control right mm. so reflect on where you are in your life yeah second check okay what it is that i can actually do to make a change you know mm. and just try and, and focus on what you can control because we get anxious right not knowing um the future having uncertainty and as humans we love certainty we love yeah. knowing okay what's yeah. going to happen and yeah But being in control yeah exactly and if you if you don't have that then you get more anxious you get more stressed and that that's the point there's no point getting stressed about it so one thing i'd say is just like focus on what you can control don't sure. really watch so much news because news for me is just negative events war, weather and sports you know okay. you don't need that so, they're not going to tell you anything positive there you know so don't watch so, as much news yeah yeah so reflect on stuff reflect on what's happening pause for four um take time to think about what's in your control and what you have power over what you have the control what you have the power to change and maybe focus on that um, as exactly. part of that and also kind of block out negative imagery and people i guess people could be added to that there are some people yeah. that would be you know what is me you know oh my god poor thing that you've gone through this is really bad you should do this and you should do that so you'd be saying yeah. to block those kind of individuals out as well yeah and also reading just read okay positive yeah. books fill yourself with like positivity have like positive affirmations as well about yourself you know this is again like the personal development 
part of it, which you can say is like sure. the last bit, you know, because once you have reflected, okay, you know whether you are on the right track, whether you're not. Second, control, right? What it is, yeah. or focus on what you can control, right? Third, personal development. How can you grow? How can you better yourself, regardless of the situation? You know, yeah. focus on what you can control. Read more. Um, have positive affirmations. Um, meditate as well. Yeah. And it's one of those things I remember when I was younger. Also, meditation was seen as something that is just like yeah, you laugh at it. But honestly, when you're talking about like mental health, which is something like I'm big at as well, big on. Yeah. I think, mindset again comes on it because mindset is more about your perspective and how you look at the world. You know, so if you're feeding yourself with this negativity and your circle of friends, your news, whatever you're watching, right, that is going to influence how you look at the world. You know, so yeah, and and the meditation stuff, I agree. With you. I mean, a lot of people now. I mean, what what is it? Mindfulness. I mean, mindfulness yeah. is shot through the roof as an app as a concept, as a movement, a lot yeah. of people are taking time to pause and think and appreciate certain things and to, to focus on their breathing, to yeah. focus on certain elements that we take for granted. And, yeah. and I think it's very, yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear what you're saying. So how would, um, if people are, and so most of your support at the moment is online, is that correct? So you're doing it through vo Zoom kind of yes. um, video conferencing, yeah. kind of software is how yeah. you're doing your coaching sessions at the moment right yeah so it's and primarily we, online yeah. now yeah zoom okay online. so it's primarily online yeah. and and when you talk about personal development just to clarify what exactly because i mean i know what i got my interpretation of it what do you yeah. mean when we what do we mean when we say to personally develop what does that mean for people yes and, and see that's a good question you bringing up that you have your own perspective of it. Because that's another mm. thing. As like, if I talk about personal development or any topic, it's mm. all personal to me. You know, it's all yeah. my interpretation of it. So my interpretation of personal development is focusing on you. You yeah. being basically, let's say, selfish, not worrying about anything else. How you can grow as an individual. You know, what you can do, yeah, to increase your self-confidence, your self-discipline, your self-awareness, your self-control, all of that, working on you yourself, right, before you go out there and try doing other things, you know, focusing yeah. on your health, what you can do. So personal development yeah. is you developing as an individual. Okay. And that's mm. in every aspect, whether that's spiritually, exactly. physically, health, mentally, yeah. you know, um, cognitively, emotionally, yeah. whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mind, body, soul. That's yeah, how I yeah, look at yeah, it, you know? yeah. So I like, yeah. you have to be all rounded. There's no point just focusing on one part, right? Or oh, yeah, you're gonna be doing your mindfulness, and then you're just yeah. gonna have KFC for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, so your health is gonna be depleting. You know, so yeah. you have to have a balance in it, and yeah. that's one thing that you need to do as an like, and it's just Definitely. about focusing on you yourself and how you can grow. Don't worry about yeah. anything else. Again, back to control. Focus on yeah. what you can control. You know, and with a growth mindset, it's about growing as well. So same, personal development, developing, Definitely. and you yeah. growing. Don't fear yeah. failure. Don't fear competing with someone else. Focus on your lane, right? And you yeah. doing what you could do and doing it as best as you can. Yeah. And and thank you for that. I mean, that's, yeah, the, the, those are cool nuggets there. And I think we've been hit with another question. So KS Minds... Yeah. Um, KSM Minds, I should say. I'm um, good to see you. I hope you're well. It's been a long time. Another LinkedIn um, link here. Um, so the question is: Is there a set period of time that you coach individuals for, or is it dictated by individual needs? It, with my coaching, it works in packages. So I've got like three months, six month, and twelve month packages. So depending on the individual needs, right? Whether they right. are just wanting to like get started, get some clarification in their life. You know, maybe they're yeah. going for the shorter package. If they really want and they know where they're heading, right, and they're really, like, focused and driven, then they'd go for one of the longer packages, you know, okay. depending on them. So there's different levels of packages, you know. Because yeah. with coaching, it's not like you have one session and that that's it. You know, you need yeah. more. So as in, like, the more you have, the better. But at the same time, not everyone's going to need 12-month packages. Not everyone's going to need yeah. three-month packages, you know. So there's something for everyone there. And and coaching is often, I mean, in my experience, being kind of a coach myself in the work that I do, 
and but yeah. not explicitly in the way that you do it through your work. Um, yeah. I guess coaching is often for set a lot in periods of time, isn't it? Because um, yeah. normally coaching is around like a specific intervention or for a specific purpose or something yeah. um, around that. So I guess if people are coming to want to get coached from you, are you hoping that people have roughly an idea of what they're wanting to get out of the process or what they're looking for? I guess that would be a part of your assessment, yeah? Exactly, exactly. So okay. we work with the client, right, to find out exactly where, what they want, you know, and what they sure. need to, like, develop. Where do they see themselves? Some people yeah. don't have that. You know, some people need clarity and they just need to figure things out. So we help them as in, like, starting from the foundation, you know, yeah. learn about your core values. What is your identity? Where do you want to sure. go in life? Sure. You know? And then, like, yeah. start from there and build up, like, okay, what it is you want to, like, focus on, you know? Aligning what personal your development, yeah. yeah, and aligning your yeah. lifestyle and your core values with what you're doing. Because if you yeah, like, let's totally. say, the outdoors, but yet, let's say, um, you have a job that is primarily indoors, you're not indoors. outdoors, then it's going against it, your core values, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, that's it. It's like finding the like foundation and starting there, you know, depending where sure. they are. Some of them already know what they want, and I've worked with clients yeah. who know what they want. They're already driven, but they just have a little bit of um, limiting yeah. beliefs in themselves, you know, sure. and their confidence maybe is lacking. So that's what they need, that extra push, you know. Yeah. And, but coaching is like, it's ongoing. So sometimes, in initially, how we have it is like, each session is like an hour, right? And yeah. we have it every fortnight, right? But okay. eventually, some people would want it every week. Some yeah. would want it just once a month. So you might start every two weeks. And then after sure. that, okay, every month, you know, just to get that little push and like a little bit of oomph, you know, to help you sure. going and keep you on track, you know, because it's sure. more about like no. accountability, you know, setting your yeah. goals. And actually, I think there was a question someone asked um, yeah. how it's measured or so. And it's basically being accountable to actually um, meeting your goals. So we, we set smart goals. You know, it's not just yeah. any random goals. We need something that is measurable, you know, something that is timely as well you know, to hit your targets and to know that you've actually achieved what it is you want to achieve. Yeah. And again, it is not about me telling you what you need to do. It's me asking and, the questions and finding exactly yeah. what it is you want to do, unlocking it within you. And I guess that varies via the individual as well, because everyone's individual goals will be different. So I guess yeah. when you're talking about smart goals, you're talking about those specific, measurable, measurable. those town-bound, you yeah. know, realistic Achievable. Um, goals achievable yep. yeah that that people are going for so when people come to you that's that's what you're capturing what their smart goals are and yep. i guess the outcome will be measured by how well they feel they're measuring or doing yep. against those goals that they've set and those milestones basically yep. so um whatever how work so, so whatever their goal is right we'd, we'd break it down and make sure it's a smart goal so we go sure. through the smart process right and break it down like that so at least we know what we're measuring it against, you yeah. know, how do you know when you have achieved it? Because sometimes yeah. you have a goal, but you don't know, okay, have I hit it? Have I not? And sure. I've come across people who say like, yeah, I've got my goal, but I don't really like write it down or, you know, I yeah. just go and see like at the end of the month if I've achieved it or not. But yeah. how do you know what that is? You know, and yeah. like there's someone as well, um, I think um, Gary V as well, and he made a video like, yeah. yeah, don't have, don't worry about like the time aspect of your goals there should be no time on goals but then that means like yeah i want to lose 10 kilos i can lose it whenever <laughs> yeah you know, yeah, like, yeah yeah it makes no difference yeah so no, yeah, there's you. some things yeah. like you, you have to be careful about what, what you say you're as well. consuming and what you're what you're taking in and following as well yeah, yeah definitely exactly. very important definitely yeah. no I, I hear that 100 percent, and i guess um you know, in terms of those smart goals as well, that's going to be based on, I guess, how Pete, I guess it's going to be how your coachee or the person you're coaching sees that they've made it. What would they recognise? How would they know that they've achieved that goal? What would it yeah. look like for them? Because um, I can see coaching very much goes against a lot of what we tend to do as human beings, and which is to give people advice. We yeah. tend to always be advising people and telling them what to do, where to go. You should do it this way. This is what I yeah. did. Yeah, you should exactly. follow this route or whatever. Whereas exactly. my understanding is with coaching, it's very much about how the per you're facilitating that process for them. You're kind of exactly. helping them, but you're not yeah. telling them what to do, which is no. very different to what people want. Do, do you find people, does anyone ever get frustrated 
at the fact that, you know, they want you, they're like, Davis, just tell me what to do. I just want to, look, man, I want to become an engineer like what you did. Tell me what to do. Yeah, I want to yeah. get there. Yeah. See, see, that's the thing. I was like, I, I keep on telling like people and some of my clients as well, there's no blueprint to life. So don't yeah. expect me to have a blueprint for your life. You yeah. Know? I'm here yeah, to real help talk. you figure out what it is you want to do. And I do yeah. that basically asking questions and helping you unlock it within yourself. Yeah. You see, it's not about like, okay, um, you want to be what? Okay, this is the path. You know, th th this is how exactly you should do it. You know, so it's hard as in like to be like, okay, these are the exact steps that you need to do. That sure. X, Y, Z, you know, because it all depends on you. Just because something yeah. as well worked for me does not mean it will work for you. Just because yeah. I enjoy something does not mean you will enjoy it as well. So that's why yeah. it's so individual and everyone needs to learn and accept that. And th there is no easy way, you know. Yeah. If Definitely. you're willing to put the effort in, then you will get the results that you want. You know, if you're there waiting and thinking like, okay, I'll just get a coach and like, yeah, just pay the money and like, yeah, they'll sort out my life for you. Like, no, I can tell you, right, it'll help yeah. you make a plan, set your goals. At the end of the day, you're the one who's going to have to take action and carry out whatever it is that you're supposed to do. I'm yeah, not going to be there definitely. checking up on you. You know, I'm not working with children here. And at the same yeah. time, you still need to take responsibility. And I would be there yeah. to hold you accountable. Like, what's going on? Why didn't you, you know, achieve your goal? It's, it's yeah. easy. And that's, a, that's the thing. There's different people and different levels. Sometimes I, what I do is like start off slow, regardless if people tell me like, oh yeah, I'm so ambitious or this. But at the same time, start with, simple goals you know not something yeah, that is just totally. out of this world you know even yeah. for they themselves and then from there okay you've proved like yes you can do it then like okay start doing more start doing more yeah but yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and i like what you're saying also another thing that you've brought into the thread as well is the thread of accountability and holding people to account and i really like that because i feel in the coaching process or in general I mean, especially with me, with the work that I do, I'm, I'm in contact with a lot of people all the time. I'm speaking to a lot of people in contact with them. And it's hard to kind of keep on top of what everyone else is doing because you've got your own life, right? Yeah. And then sometimes you find that, you know, people, it's hard to kind of find out where people have gotten to sometimes because, you know, people do need to be held to account. So, yeah. and one of the biggest issues that you find with people is when they're pursuing a goal and they get a setback or an obstacle or they get knocked suddenly that goal kind of falters into the background you know how yeah. do you keep people accountable to build resilience and to get them on board so 100 percent, I, I totally yeah. get that and and we've got um from paper um we've got a question yet again and um, she would like to know what's your greatest success story so far okay Craig, so my cool personal question, success you. story so is my education journey, I would say, achieving my okay. master's degree. But I'll give okay. a little bit of a background on why that is. So when I was in Kenya, 14, I think I got kicked out of school, me and my siblings as well, when I was around 10 years old, right? Out of school for like three years before moving to the UK, right? So no education. We were learning from like my cousins, like old books. And she was a year below me as well. Yeah. But anything, doing like home tutoring, and doing that, so three years out of school, moved to the UK, different system, like just different culture, you know, adjusting to that as well. Yeah. Came here, did my G GCSEs. I think I got like 11 A to Cs, most of them were B to Cs, and went into college, studied um, maths, physics, okay. electronics, um, and yeah, what was that one? Accounting. Boy. Accounting, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing. I was like, and people were like, "Oh, you're crazy, man!" Those subjects, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, but this is what I need to be an engineer." I, I already knew what I wanted to be. You know, some people are not fortunate enough to like know exactly this is the, what I want to do. But I knew, so I was like, yeah. "This is what I need to do." I had to drop like accounting at the end of the first year because it was just like with maths and physics was something else. And what I got in those right for my A levels was B and two E's. That's the thing. So I, 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 yeah. I got those, and I was like, "Bloody hell, man! How am I even going to get into uni and stuff?" Yeah. And but after that, I was like, no, I'm still going to be able to do it. I want to be an engineer. So I went, I had to, because um, of the results, get a start a foundation. So I did one year foundation, then did my sure. three year course. But I did so well in the three years, right, that I was offered to do a master's. So I was like, yeah, I need to get done with um, education. I'll, I'm, once I'm done with the system, 
I don't want to go back and like you know get back into uni do a masters like however sure. many years later unless it's like a MBA or something so got an um, offer to do the uh, masters did that crushed it as well except for some tutors that are a little bit you know biased as well don't want to give me my fast yeah. class you know like 1% of a fast class wow. but that's another story but yeah so for me is achieving my masters Definitely, especially like, given from where you've come from yeah. in terms of like being effectively kicked out and 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 here you are now that's yeah. brilliant and um, i think also what people was looking for um because i'm conscious of time as well so i think this would be the last question yeah. um that we'll go through but i guess what was your greatest success st- story for one of your clients for someone that you've coached okay one of the best and she's like one of my best clients that i've worked with she was working at a job and she was basically not confident i would say and she wanted to um she she wasn't happy at work and she wanted to start her own like business and leave and she was thinking of like um starting her own yoga um practice okay business yeah, yeah practice yeah you know I, but she was still like unsure and i was like working with her to like okay put into place the um the plan or like you know the steps of how you would actually go about doing it you know yeah and so we sat together we worked to, together for a couple of months and she put it to place she went into work told them okay she wants to like work less hours so i think she was started working from home as well some of the time and yeah. she booked her yoga course retreat i think in india and just to get like her certification and all of this she started like coaching um or doing yoga practice with within her friends as well I was pushing her to get um her own like um studio as well in the local area put yeah. out flyers get some practice again you know so that's like one of the biggest so she started that and she went down that route and she was ready to also like um quit the job and do this full time right. so like he, she like, she did, she made the leap she jumped basically yeah, exactly, look, right? okay exactly so she j- jumped from it being just an idea like okay i want to do this um i'm i'm, I'm unsure to okay so i'm definitely doing this and getting everything in place because she herself was so driven some people are yeah. more hesitant you know they're like oh yeah but this but that but no but she was like ready for it and that's the thing some people and some clients it's so easy to work with you know so but i haven't spoken to her since like the covid like situation you know so okay. she was about to go on a retreat and quit her job like at the end of the march because we stopped working together and so is it is to see like okay what it is but for her that is like my biggest success so far you know just oh, getting brilliant. somewhere to believe in themselves and actually just them being thankful and i'm like you don't thank me it was all within you you know i'm yeah, not yeah. the one who take like um responsibility or take all of the praise no 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 i don't do really anything i just let you unlock it within yourself so everything you do right your success or your failures is all basically down to you you know take yeah, responsibility and push for it you know yeah. so no that's great that that's an amazing testimony that's powerful yeah. and um obviously you know we we're, we're coming to that time as what always happens we do, we start flowing people get excited you know questions get put in and then you blink and then it's towards the end so yeah. how can people get hold of you davis if people are interested in your services they want to have a discovery call or to be coached or to get some sessions how can they get hold of you so i got like my website triumph coaching dot com you can go there we've got okay. all of the information you can book a discovery call you can follow me on um or should i say follow us i keep on saying me but at the same time for me it's, it's triumph coaching you know so yeah you can follow us on instagram we have, we have a facebook page um twitter we're there um, you're very active on, on linkedin on linkedin I'm there yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah linkedin as well I'm there so yeah so instagram if you want inspirational and motivational content as well you know and it's not stuff about like yeah money and chasing these things it's yeah. like no it's things to like cool values. Yeah, yeah kick you up your ass and get you ready for life you know <laughs> as in yeah, yeah. so no, yeah. that's brilliant okay so that's how people can get hold of you and like everyone you know we encourage everyone to follow our guests because like i said this our meetings our podcast um it's all about for this particular series it's about shining a light um on yeah. members of our community you know and i'm glad dave you know better late than never i'm yes, glad man. we managed to so get it done well. no and no I, problem what you do with the with the platform as well man i thank you so much this is what we need more just these conversations yeah. you know and like yeah. Yeah, i'm so thankful to you as well like, just for the opportunity 
as well and keep on going with this man honestly i wish it was like in the studio and maybe we'll do it like later down the line as well yeah you know? unfortunately because as you know we kind of had the studio we, yeah. we do do our stuff in the studio but unfortunately covid hit so this has been kind of our kind of contingency our backup to kind of keep going well. keep going so you know thank you bro i appreciate that man the thank feedback you so much. i'm glad it worked this time helped. as well man Yeah definitely I remember last time it was mad <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> when 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 we did it it wasn't connecting but he did brilliantly yeah. actually I mean Hustlers Hub you said great conversation guys I mean I would strongly recommend and the Hustlers Hub you might want to check them out they they've also got their um website and they're on LinkedIn as well but particularly around your coaching and what you do they're an online platform so I think yeah, yeah. you might find some some synergy there in some of your yeah. personal development stuff that you do and your coaching yeah. I think there might be some synergy as a potential coach or a mentor perhaps just, just from the little hustlers hookup. man I like hustlers yeah you yeah know, hustlers up it's really cool person behind it she's pretty cool as well you know yeah, very yeah. cool so um do check it out connect with it I think it's a great concept but like I said with our platform this is all about um providing teachable moments our platforms about learning and we do that through conversation obviously for those of you who are just joined um we we were about to finish up for yeah, this where segment have you been? a minute where have you been we started at nine o'clock you know um okay so hustlers hub there you go she says yes I will find you on LinkedIn so she's going to connect with you Davis on LinkedIn so I strongly Wonderful. urge you to follow Davis also for those of you that are joining in we've got a backlog of stuff as well in terms of our YouTube channel and our podcast just put in lounge academics as it's spelt um on our screen I hope you've enjoyed it I've definitely enjoyed it as well um Davis I just want to say you know thank you man um it's been great um it's thank been great so having much. you I'm Great could I just, this happened. Could I say one yeah. last like word for everyone? Sure. Like, everyone just believe in yourselves and like find your own path. Don't listen to what anyone else is saying, what anyone else is doing. Focus on you. Self reflect, find what it is for yourself, not anyone else as in like honestly, I, I don't want to swear on here but as in like it's <laughs> your life to live. It's your life yeah. to live, you know, so as in like yeah. go for it and just at this time with the craziness that's happening you have to just focus on yourself and like control what it is you can control you know and go yeah. for it it is within you so it's all down to you definitely no thank you man that's that's a wonderful um closing remark you know so mm-hmm. thank you sir and thank you so much brilliant you take care. and um like us let's let's keep talking let's keep definitely. connected and we'll speak soon man thank you so much yeah thank definitely. you david take care, have a good night take care same to you man all right bye bye, bye.